Hello Internet! After rummaging through my hard drive, I was finally able to find my channel's password, which means that in this video, I'll be showing how to become and remain overpowered in Elden Ring throughout the story and keep on growing to the point you are as overpowered as Alex Lewis Armstrong or Saitama without having to fight anyone to begin with, though there will be some challenge towards the end of this video. Now I know I am as late as James May trying to arrive at his destination, but I decided to have a go myself and make my own guide based on my experience after getting obliterated multiple times in the game to reach this point. So here goes then. So for the first half of this guide, all you'll be doing is mainly collecting runes without engaging in any fights with any of the enemies. As you exit the cave, there will be this white face masked dude calling you out for not having a maiden with you when you talk to him. L plus maidenless plus no runes plus touch grace plus ungrafted plus invaded plus parried plus scarlet rot plus one shot plus you level dex. Now don't have your fragile ego be fractured yet because he'll be necessary at a later stage. In the meantime, follow this path to collect all the runes, location maps and activate all the glowy bits to unlock your fast travel around this region. I will have the video linked in the description giving you a detailed walkthrough to getting all the runes because I don't want this video to be an hour long. Once you have paid a visit to Santa Claus Gremlin in the destroyed church, followed by a visit from Melena which gives you uh, the ring to summon your steed, continue collecting the runes and smithing stones until she visits you again. After the third church of America, take all the flasks and tears, head to the minor earth tree here, collect the map and more crystal tears because the world out there is too cruel and we can't afford to lose our runes constantly. These tiers will restore HP or increase your stamina and charge attacks. So mix and match them as per your desire if you feel like Bruce Lee or Liu Yud already. Now rest at the grace site and have Milena yeet you to the round table where you'll meet all the losers like yourself. Go to the blacksmith but instead of starting a conversation with him, open up the menu and consume all the runes you've collected. This should put your rune count to around 10k at this point. Once you've done that, talk to the weird hermit-like blacksmith and upgrade your weapons using the smithing stones you've collected. This should get your weapon up to plus 4, enough to deal a strong blow and not get one tapped by most of the game. Wish I had known that at the start. Alternatively, you can hold on to them and get better weapons later that will deal more damage and upgrade those. Go to the other side of the round table and you'll see two weird old ladies sitting in a room and buy the finger seal if you are going for a magic build. Then go back and forth between Rodrika and Blacksmith to unlock Spirit Tuning, which sounds like some 90s and early 2000s JDM tuning house. This gives you the ability to upgrade your spirits which we'll return to later on. Now open your map and go to the church where you met Santa Gremlin and buy the clothes and cooking recipes from him. While you're at it, don't forget to buy the crafting kit from him as well. This gives you the ability to craft items which are going to be useful for this rune farming technique. If you have already upgraded and don't have any runes, simply kill some of the enemies around in the area to get a few. This will unlock crafting items that you'll need later in the game and the clothing should provide an additional protection from getting one tapped by everything that looks like mutated Jeff Goldblum or Undertaker. It's best to visit this church at night or just simply select the nighttime option as you'll encounter a blue waifu called Rani who'll give you the spirit summoning bell which will be as useful as a Swiss army knife. Along with that she'll also give you the wolf spirits. This is a very powerful spirit early on in the game and you can use them to distract enemies as you consume your flask to replenish your health. Because of course, you are a noob. Make sure you equip that in your equipment tab. Now go to the merchant sitting under the arch like a cat under a dumpster over here and buy the bow from him. This will be useful for ranged combats in certain situations where you don't want to waste your FP if you haven't figured that out yet. Also pick up the gold pickled foul foot behind him which will be useful later on. 
Given that you have upgraded armor and weapons now, it's time to start swinging your weapons like a noob in hopes of getting a hit on the enemies. That is, if you are upgraded for this. Else you can come back once you have powerful enough weapons to fight your way through. Now this is one of the optional locations to visit if you have upgraded your weapons already called Fort Hyatt. If you are going for a bleed build, then this is the perfect place to get all the bleed related items, including the Blood Slash Ash of War from the mini boss here which makes your equipped weapon apply bleed effect to an enemy when you swing at them. This won't turn your screen into a dead alive like bloody mess, but there is a lot of blood splatter animation. Studios have budget to work with, you know. The blood grease recipe can be found down in the room in front just as you enter the castle and the ash of war after you beat the mini boss at the top, albeit you have to fight a few enemies to get there. There's also the medallion bit in the treasure chest in one of the towers. Make sure you're collecting that as well. Now we go down south to the weeping peninsula. We cross the bridge of sacrifice where we won't be sacrificing ourselves, hopefully, and go to one of these carriages and pick up the morning star. This is also a very powerful weapon early on, dealing a lot of bleed damage. Keep going straight past the black knight on his horse, through the pathway between the broken walls and slightly on the right is another golden seed. Just be careful not to be obliterated by the enormous arrow shooting giant. Then turn back and go west and north to the pilgrimage church for the sacred tier. and go west more for the 4th Church of America for another sacred tier. Now go to the Limgrave Tunnel over here via one of the grace sites closest to it and collect more smithing stones in there. If you have upgraded your weapon already then this should be an easy breeze to pass through the enemies. Just make sure you summon the wolves at the boss fight at the end of the cave. Other few locations to visit will be the Stormfoot Catacombs and Cliff Bottom Catacombs. These locations will give you the Grave Glover 2 and 3, which you can use them to finally level up your Spirit Ashes. If you want to go one step further, I would recommend going to the Tomsworth Catacombs in Weeping Peninsula, where if you beat the boss there, you'll get what everyone has now figured out as one of the most powerful spirit ash you can summon, Luthel the Headless. She teleports around and blows powerful strikes enough to keep the enemies distracted. It's definitely a spirit you can use throughout most of the game. Finally there's the ever goal in south of Limgrave. Beating this boss will give you one of the most powerful weapons in the game early, the Bloodhound Fang. This sword has a unique skill where you do a swing and do a backflip and do a bleed damage. At least someone in the dev team is happy to have Simon in the game now. Now we move to an area where you are basically a virgin. To go to Kaelid, start from the third church of America. Go northeast behind the church until you see a portal behind some of the bushes near the lake. Interact with the portal and you'll spawn behind a large enemy but don't shit your pants over it. Just spawn your steed and run down, take the golden seed and go down to the grave site. In this region, there are these little guys mindlessly walking about like they are tired from fapping to Erzar Scarlet and are now walking sober. Just walk up behind them and stab them in the back. They drop about a thousand runes, which is as decent as getting yourself a used car at a reasonable price in this day and age of shortage and supply chain issues. But we need a lot of runes at once, so cut yourself some slack and head down the bridge. Pass the dragon and behind the earth tree, jump in the whirlwind and land on the ground and take the grace site. Now comes the fun part, killing a massive dragon in front of the site grace for a huge rune drop. This will be easy, but make sure you are prepared for it. Equip the morning star and craft blood grease and apply that to the equipped weapon though this is optional. Get behind the dragon on its left side next to its hind legs which is directly in front of you and start swinging that morning star at it. This causes the damage to be inflicted with bleed damage. Now just as the dragon is about to die, consume the gold pickled fowl foot. 
This will increase the rune acquisition for the next 3 minutes, like a cheap knockoff Viagra. Once the dragon dies, it takes all the 5 dragons around it. Because you had consumed that golden foot, the payout for killing this dragon will be 15% more. Since we are at Fort Faro, we may as well go inside and take the other half of the medallion, which is up top on the balcony of the tower. Then we jump down here on the other end of the fort to grab a level 12 golden rune and a very useful talesman by jumping across the ledge, dodging the giant rats, jumping down the ladder and going into a corner and picking up the Radagon's source seal. Bonus if you can make out alive without getting killed by the rats or the bats. This talesman when equipped trades in a portion of your damage resistance for more dexterity, endurance, health and strength. While your character will experience taking more damage, it will inflict substantially more damage to the enemies with better upgraded weapons. Now I won't be telling you where to spend your runes because that's like a random stranger telling you what underwear to wear. Also at this point may as well go to the round table and get your spirits and weapons finally upgraded. Once you've exhausted your runes, smithing stones and glowworts, use the remaining runes you have left and spend those like you are throwing money at strippers at a strip club. Finally, after all that work which would have taken the best of 2 hours at max to cover all the rune farming, it's time to play the story a little before we return to rune farming 2.0. Go to the Stormvale castle, fight off the enemies and defeat the boss Godric the Grafted to progress ahead. You'll need to de defeat the boss in order to progress for this next rune farming. With your weapons now leveled up, you now stand a chance at killing him with help from the spirits. After defeating him, leave the castle and keep heading north to the telescope above the Laskia ruins. Here inside one of the structures is Raya who will give you a simple quest to fetch her necklace from a tarnished at the boiler prawn shack just northwest from her position. Go there and talk to the thief who will agree to part with the necklace for 1000 runes. Buy it and after a conversation with him, you'll unlock the ability to buy boiled prawns from him. These are great for noobs who are worried about taking hits while trying to be agile with light armor. These increase physical damage resistance for about 3 minutes. Return to Raya, talk to her and she'll give you an invitation to the Volcano Manor for one hell of a quest that I shall not be spoiling. After completing this, head towards the Rose Church where you'll meet the white faced dude you met at the start of Limgrave. Once you've dragged your ass to the church, talk to him and he'll give you some severed fingers. Probably from Jimmy Clarkson when he was trying to make a sandwich. I don't even like to eat a sandwich I've made myself because it's always got blood in it and bits to my fingers. Use these fingers to invade other players. Doesn't matter if you win or lose. Just complete the duel with the players three times, then return to the white faced dude and talk to him again. He'll give you a hanky and instruct you to go to the four bell fires which require some cardio to get up there because your character has no life partners. Instead, it chose the life of suffering through dying and respawning. There'll be a key in one of the chests above, collect and use it on the third portal. If you don't understand which one it is, just refer to the messages calling for revenge. Insert the key into the statue next to that portal, activate it and go inside. Now you're back where you fought the first boss. Key thing to remember here is that you won't get any summons to help you. You are on your own here. But all that rune farming and weapon upgrading means you'll be able to defeat the creepy human spider thingy by swinging the sword with some bleed effect applied to it and presto, you have defeated it. Probably. Hopefully. After defeating it, go back into the room where you started the game out from. There'll be a dead woman's body over there and use the cloth the white faced dude gave you on her and soak it in her blood. Apparently somehow her blood is still fresh enough to have the hanky get soaked in it. That'll require some NCIS investigation work to find out how. Oh no! Anyway! Return to the white faced dude and give him the blood soaked hanky and in exchange, he'll give you a funny looking seal. 
Even though he tells you to have patience, we don't have time for that. So we'll use the seal and that'll teleport us to the Mogwin Dynasty Mausoleum. Activate the grey site there and call in your trusty steed again. Here there will be an open area in front of you with lots of enemies. Hug the wall on the right, galloping past them all and collecting some epic items on the way. Climb up the path and rest at the site of grace. Now comes the juiciest part of them all. The bow you collected from the merchant under the arch is going to be an essential in farming here. Equip the bow and craft some arrows and equip those in the first arrow slot. The second slot is for charge attacks if the bow has one. Now do as I am doing here by walking up to this part of the edge, aiming down the red bird and shooting the arrow at it. Make sure you are aiming down at this region between the tree branches to get a perfect hit every time. As soon as the pea brain bird tries to run towards you, it falls down the edge almost every time. As soon as it falls down, run back to the grace site and have the bird reset back into its place. Walk up to the same edge again, aim down the arrow, shoot, run back to the site and reset it over and over. Killing this bird gives you about 11,000 runes, so it's best to exhaust your arrows over it and then leveling up. Mathematically, with this method, you'll be earning about 11,000 runes every 15 seconds. Now obviously, nothing in this game is infinite, unless you're using the cheat engine. At some point, you're going to run out of arrows and will need to replenish materials for it. To do this, bring up the map, change to the top layer and go to Tombsward Grace site, which will be near the 4th Church of Merica. Here, on both the left and right side, There'll be field filled with sheep which drop thin bones. Just get on your steed and equip any long range weapon to get a good hit on them. Just like how the Aussies do with cattle herding. Probably. There's also a huge walking mausoleum in this location. Either run past it or kill it by attacking two of its four legs. Removing the spirit skulls stuck onto its legs. Like leeches that latch onto your feet after walking through a swamp lake. Knock it down and run to the isolated merchant's shack and activate the grace site there. From there go to the coastal area heading north hugging the wall. Once you've cleared the walking deads, you'll see the birds. This is your farm location for fright feathers which you can use it for crafting bows by combining it with thin bones. Use the same strategy here as you did with the big red bird in Mogwine to farm all the feathers. This also happens to be a great place to also get loads of fowl feet which can be used for making the gold pickle fowl foot which can be very useful to boost our rune acquisition by grilling that red bird. But first, we need the recipe for it. To get the gold pickle fowl foot recipe, go to the Murkwater cave which is here in Limgrave. You might have to fight an invader here. If that is the case, then go to the south of Dragonburnt Ruins and under the arch, there will be a very sus ninja standing there. Talk to him and he'll later help you with fighting the invader near the Murkwater cave. Go into it, defeat the enemies in the way and enter the large cave room. There will be a chest there, open it and you'll hear a very familiar souls character voice named Patches. Fight him until he surrenders, have a quick conversation with him and go to the grace site. Reset and visit him again inside. This time, he'll have a shop open for you. Buy the gold pickle fowl foot and most importantly, the missionary cookbook too. This gives us the ability to craft the gold pickle fowl foot which boosts the rune acquisition for 3 minutes. Obviously, by now you should have figured out that one thing in this game is tied to another. To make the gold pickle fowl foot, the one ingredient that we need that you won't have is gold firefly. This is also found near the tomb's ward grace site. Spawn there, take the horsey, ride up the mountain between the broken arches, ignoring the trumpet sounding soldier and reach the pond full of octopus up top. Use your trusty steed to quickly pick up all 11 gold fireflies and return to the closest grace site and rest to reset. Rinse and repeat. Now combine the ingredients and make as many gold pickle fowl foot as your lazy ass was able to sit through the entirety of this video. Now return to the Mogwen Palace grace site, equip the gold pickle fowl foot, consume it and start shooting the bird. 
This method will give you about 13,000 runes every time you shoot the bird for the next 3 minutes. Now if you're feeling as brave as Jackie Chan, try defeating the bosses in the abandoned cave in Kaelid for an added boost to your rune farming. Getting there to the boss is about as tough as protecting your character from the 1918 Spanish flu. There is a really cool serpent bow as well along the way if you can get it without dying from the scarlet rot. Defeating the bosses in it will give you the golden scarab talesman. Equip and combine this with the gold picker foul foot, you will get a rune acquisition of about 17,000 runes every time you kill that bird. Combine the materials needed for making the arrows, the gold picker foul foot, the golden scarab and this location with the bird that now gives you 17,000 runes every 10 seconds, you'll be bathing in runes with little effort in no time. This also means you'll easily be over leveled for some of the regions and the boss fights. Your character should now be able to pass the later parts of the map by easily cheesing through them now, like Saitama from One Punch Man. What started as a passive way of leveling up, you have now moved out of that and are now leveling up by exploiting a mechanic that was intentionally put there by the devs to encourage rune farming after progressing to a certain point in the story. At least that's what I'm hoping since they haven't patched it yet. While this exploit helps you to level up your character, remember that you also need to collect the smithing and somber stones for your weapons. After all, a noob soul player is only as good as the weapon they are wielding. So ensure your weapons are also up to the mark as well. You'll definitely be needing better upgraded weapons and not just a beefy character where you think you can one shot your way through the entirety of the game. Unless you're using the cheat engine that is. Anyways, I hope this video has helped you out, tarnished. Good luck out there and don't smash up your controller. Remember to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for videos like this that I'll upload when I feel like it I guess. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care and bye bye.